Hello friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. Are you ready to upcycle some thrifted items today? I hope so, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this mulberry rice paper that is just beautiful. It's got beautiful greens and tans and even that mushroom color that I love. A little bit of burgundy, there's a little bit of color there. And we're going to take these papers and put them on some thrift flip items. So this first one is this cute little stackable drawer set, this uh, jewelry box. I think my daughter had one of these way back when. Uh, and I picked this up for, I believe it was $5 at Goodwill. So one of the star knobs was gone off from it and they had put it in the drawer. So I don't want to keep those on there anyway. For what I'm going to do, they're going to get in the way and they're not going to match when I'm done. So I'm just going to take those off. They popped off really easy as you could see. And then I just sanded down the whole piece just a little bit because it is quite bright and I want to be able to cover it up. So I have this DIY paint from Debbie's Design Diaries. And I am going to, these are just little samples that I picked up so that I can try out her paints. They're really great and a lot of the YouTubers and crafters use them. So I've been picking up little kits here and there to try the paint out. So I picked these two colors to match this mulberry paper that I have here, this rice paper. And one is, this color I believe is the faded burlap. It's a great base off white color. I really like it. So I'm going to do two coats all over this box and cover up all this color and writing with just those two coats. That is all that I needed to do. Just let the first coat dry and then once that's dry, do the second coat. And there we go. It's all coated. Now here comes the problem with the drawers. Anything that you do with drawers, they always get painted in and it's really hard to get them to open. And of course the knobs aren't on these and you can't reach through the back or through the bottom to push them out from that way. So I had a really hard time with these drawers. Uh, I had a vision and I was gonna make it happen. <laughs> so, this is what I did. <laughs> I banged on it and uh, I got a little crazy with this thing. Uh, I just took my razor blade and went along the edges and tried to loosen up that paint. And this is just the start of my drawer problems on this thing. Uh, I did get it to come out and I was able to loosen it up and sand down the little paint uh, pieces along the edges that were kind of making it stick. But then, of course, you know, stuff happens. So I took this clear paint once I got it all set so the drawers would come out, and I sealed the piece. Uh, I'm not going to paint the front, the drawers again, but I am going to do the top and the sides. So I'm going to use my distressing method with Vaseline. I love using this method. You guys are going to get sick of seeing it probably. Uh, and then I'm going to take this green DIY paint and I'm going to do two coats over the top and the sides of this little drawer stack. Now it's not going to cover completely because you use that Vaseline as a resist to the paint. So as you can see the darker spots on this piece are where the Vaseline was put. I may have gone a little bit overboard with the Vaseline. I probably should have just done a little bit less than that, but I don't know. It's kind of cool. It's different. It's not like anybody else's, and that's kind of what I like to do is just kind of just go with it and see what happens. I, it's only paint. If I don't like it, I can always repaint over it and do something different. So I'm going to take this mulberry paper now that the sides are done and I'm going to Mod Podge these onto my drawers. Um, I, again, more drawer problems. This probably, I shouldn't have done it this way, but I thought that it would look more cohesive, you know, like one piece if I did it all this way. And you're probably watching this going, oh no, what are you doing? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. This is just what my mind was telling me to do. <laughs> um, 
I just wanted to, I thought that, you know, if I just took my razor blade and went over this, that it would cut the paper and it would make the drawers work fine, but it really didn't, and I had a little bit of a struggle. And you'll see how I fix it in the end, because it does come out in the end, trust me. But anyway, we're going to <laughs> Mod Podge the, this paper onto the drawers, and we just do it in little sections so that we know we get it down and it gets it all flat and I just use my finger and go along and just kind of work the paper in. It is a little bit thicker than your regular decoupage paper or your napkins so you can work with it just a little bit longer. I did use my plastic wrap and I put it over the top and just rolled it with my roller just to get some of the bubbles out and make sure that it was uh, just stuck down really well. So here I'm just gonna go along the crevices of my little drawers before it dries too much. It's already dried quite a bit, but I, you know, before it dries solid, solidly closed, I wanted to just cut along the paper and get those drawers so that they, that they work. So no matter what I did, I could not get these open. So I decided where the old handles were I would drill a little screw into that hole. I'm going to be putting new knobs on anyway because it'll, it'll cover up that hole. So I just uh, put a screw in there and that helped me wiggle those free because I just couldn't get my hands in there and, and get them free. So I just had to go through with my, my razor knife and just um, go along the edges and uh, pull on that little screw so that I could get those out. So what have I learned from this? Next time, take the drawers out and do them separately. Don't do them in the in this drawer stack because it just is a pain in the butt. But I did go in and, as you can see here, I'm sanding off any of the extra paper that was on the edge. I sanded around the drawers so that they're nice and loose now and they go in and out really well. Um, and I, I think that was part of the problem was the Mod Podge got in there and then paper got in there and it all just... Uh, didn't work very well but uh, that's what I have learned is to take those out and do individually and just figure it out a different way because that was just a real stinker. Now I'm sealing in with some Mod Podge. Uh, all that paper needs to be sealed and uh, I just I did the the stack and then I'm doing the drawers here. You can see the little holes there but again uh, they're going to be covered up with some new little handles so you won't even see those. Now I'm just going to take the sandpaper again once it's dried and I have the drawers back in and they slide in and out nicely. I'm just going to sand it down the front just a little bit to make it look a little more distressed and aged. And then when I'm done with that I'm going to take my antiquing wax and I'm gonna go along the edges and just give it a little bit of an aged look. So I'm just a, just a little bit along the edge and then I don't know if I, I don't think I show you but I also do in between each drawer and so that you get the top and the bottom of the drawer as well so it just looks aged all the way around. And then I just wipe it back after I put it on there and just feather it out work my way into the drawer just a little bit and I think it's just a nice highlight for the front of this little drawer stack. So I'm also going to use the antiquing wax on the sides and the top where I painted it and just kind of uh, give it a full coat and then wipe it back with my rag. So the next thing that I do is I have these little round beads and I took some clay and I covered up the, they have holes through them, so I took clay and put them down over one of the holes, so one side, so that 
uh, when I put them onto my box, you can't see the hole. The other side's going to be glued to the box, so I'm not really worried much about that. So I did paint these with that faded burlap and then antique waxed them and just rubbed them back. So they had the same age look as the box. And then I'm just gluing them on over where the old um, handles were with the little stars and where I put those holes with the uh, with the screw so that I could get the box open. Just the hardest part was getting these in line so that they didn't look like they were all crooked, but I think it came out pretty good. See what you think. This is a quick little thrift flip that I'm going to do with this rolling pin and this mulberry rice paper. So it's kind of a nasty looking rolling pin. I got this a while back thrifted from probably Goodwill and for a couple dollars and I want to put this paper over the middle of this rolling pin. Now I could sand this down and make it so you could reuse it but I want to do a little decor. I had two different ones in my booth. Both of them have sold and I don't have any more in there so I wanted to uh, do up another one so that I could put that in. So I'm just cutting it down about the width of my rolling pin. I'm going to leave a little bit that I can sand off later on. I just want it to fit the whole middle section of that rolling pin. So now that I have that figured out I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to start with a small section and just start coating it and putting the paper on. I'm going to do this a little slow so that um, it won't wrinkle. Going around circles like this sometimes they wrinkle and they get bubbles and stuff so I just want to do a little section and get it started and I also want to make sure that it goes on to the rolling pin straight. Sometimes they get off kilter and you don't get them on straight so here I'm just trying to figure out, yeah, make sure it's getting on there right. And I left a little bit along the back because I knew that I would have to trim it. And I wanted the image to go all the way around and not have like a, a big white spot in the back. And then you could have it go sit however you wanted to for decor. Now you probably noticed that I didn't paint this rolling pin before I put my paper on. This is a lot like decoupage paper where you probably should have a lighter color behind it. But this wood on this rolling pin was light enough that I thought it would be fine and it was okay with me if it came through the paper and showed a little bit more of a rustic look. It just adds to the aged look to it, I think. So once I get it all the way around, I just took my plastic wrap, wrapped it around there, and just used my hands to kind of move the bubbles out and the wrinkles. And then I took my antique wax. I think this is the stain that I mix with water and a little bit of black paint, so it makes like a darker stain. And I go around the handles and around the end of it uh, and just give it a coat, and then I wipe it back. I love the color that this came out and it matches the middle section as well because you can kind of see it come through. I don't know, it just looks like a faded piece of, of uh, art on the rolling pin. So once I did that and then I took my sandpaper and just sanded off that little bit of lip of paper. That I had. Now I should have probably done this first but I'm going to go ahead and put some antique wax on it anyway on the edges so it doesn't really matter. 
I just sanded back a little bit on that paper just to give it a, a little bit more of an aged look and then went around the edges where I'd sanded. Some of the paper had ripped off and so it looked a little jagged so I thought this would be a good opportunity to put the antique wax on and then uh, it would stick in the certain spots and just look really uh, aged and vintage. Now this last project are these uh, wooden sconces. They're really beautiful sconces, but it's nothing that I want. And I didn't really want to paint the whole thing. I could have easily enough, but I wanted to use a smallberry paper on it again. And I had a few pieces of it left. So uh, I thought I would use these two that had a little bit of color on them. Uh, and they were kind of tall and skinny, so they would fit on to this tall and skinny sconce. So I'm going to do both of these exactly the same. I'm probably going to show you one and then bounce over to the other one as I'm doing something else so you don't see the same thing over again. But basically I just cut off the writing on the bottom of this and figure out exactly where I want it to sit on my uh, sconce back. Now it doesn't go all the way up but that's okay. What I do, I don't think I show you here, but what I do after is I go back and kind of rip the top and the bottom and give them an organic kind of ripped um, uh, distressed look so that uh, it just isn't a straight line going across. Um, so I can't remember. I probably do it once I put it on there. I was like, geez, I probably should have done that before I even stuck it on there. But um it worked out fine. I just stuck it down and then while it was still wet I ripped that, those top pieces off. It I didn't use water but it's like I use when I do my decoupage paper and I use water around the edges and then you can rip it. The Mod Podge softened it up enough so that I could just rip right through that paper a little bit and it worked really well. So I just Mod Podged it down and then um, used my paper, my plastic to roll it on and get the wrinkles and bubbles out and then I'm sanding the edges to get the excess paper off and clean off any Mod Podge that has seeped out around the bottom. And here you can see at the top and the bottom, I did go ahead and rip those. And I don't know why I didn't get it on screen for you, but you can see it's not totally straight across anymore. So I think that looks a lot better. And the edges are a little bit rounded. So I'm just coating the paper with Mod Podge so it's sealed in really nicely and it doesn't peel up or um, you know, try to try to fall off the sconce. So this is my wax, uh, antique wax, water and black paint mixture, my dark stain. And I'm just gonna go over the wood part and just a little bit onto the edges of the paper to again age it, distress it, just make it a little uh, older. Now when I go ahead and wipe this back it does darken it just a little bit but it does leave a little bit of that dark wax in the cracks and it just makes it look aged and like it's been around. You can see the difference between the two. I left the one that I hadn't done on the top there yet and uh, I wanted to sh so that you could see the difference uh, in what I'm doing with these pieces. So just coated the whole thing and now I'm just wiping her back and making sure I get any puddles that are on there or anything like that and it just stays in the cracks and crevices. It looks pretty cool. It darkened that wood just a little bit. I really like how these came out. Very different. Then I go ahead and do the second one exactly the same. And that's all for that part. And then um, I take some twine around the top and just glue a little bit in the back and I go around it just kind of crisscross and up and down and then I tie a little shoestring bow 
and that goes along the top as well. I just thought it needed a little bit of something up there to um, dress it up. So that's kind of like the lipstick on the piece. There you go. And then you see what you think of that. Let me know down in the comments what, if any, of these projects you liked. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check the description down below. I will have links to the paper down there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.